Well, good morning, YouTube. Lofty's here. I'm not sitting here for a while. I've not actually made a video for quite a while. Most of the stuff you've been watching has been in the can for a while. We've been ever so busy. We've been getting ready for reopening the B&B. And we've had friends and re relatives and guests up here. So we've, we've not really had much time to ride the bikes. But I'm out today. The sun's come out after a couple of really wet days. And I'm here today. So what am I riding today for you? It's a 23 model, but for all intents and purposes, it's the same as the 24. This is the CMX, the Honda, the 1100. It's in a manual form and quite a pleasant looking uh, silvery grey anthracite, whatever you want to call it, but it does look nice. Anyway, if you're interested in the Honda CMX 1100, stick around. I'll see you in a minute. Good morning, YouTube. Here we are, Upper Dam Rules, Honda CMX 1100. Okay. Good morning, YouTube. I'm on the CMX 1100. The big rebel. The 1100 rebel. Now there's a, there's a few old stock left, this is actually a 2023 model and they're doing some fantastic deals, you can actually buy this bike brand new today for 9 grand, £8,999, oh it's a nice line, look at that roads have dried out at last, but hey, that's good that is so it's got a forward stance on the pegs, here we go up the hill Yeah, it goes quite well. It's not quite as bulky as the NT or the Africa Twin because it's tuned different. Let's have a look at it. Okay, YouTube, here we are. I've got a tiddler. It's not strictly a tiddler. It's quite a small bike. It's got a big engine. This is the CMX 1100. This beauty is basically the same as the NT 1100 or the Africa Twin. It's in manual, guys. It's got a clutch. As you'll see, it's got a low seat, very, very low seat. As you know, I'm a big lad. I'm six foot five, 17 and a half stone. So when I put my legs across this, as you can see, I've got a good six inches above the seat. So as I sink down, I would imagine most people could flat foot this. And to be fair, if you struggle to flat foot this, I don't think there's anywhere else you can go. This is pretty much as low as it gets. It's got a centre mid peg. It Does that sound daft? They're not a foot forward, which would be nice for me being big. And they're not underneath you like some of the Arleys. They're like slightly to the front. So it's a bit like an armchair fitted. So I can get on and operated, the cutaway is not big enough for me, I'm a good three inches past the cutaway, but the pegs are wide so it don't matter. It's all right, isn't it? It's a nice enough bike, it's a good engine, it's got plenty of go, under build quality. Should have a close look. So let's have a walk round, from the back to the front. Typical cruiser style, isn't it? Big Rebel, proper brakes. LED lights, it's got all the extras, all the extras. Good looking bike. Let's have a sit on it. Okay, in typical cruiser form, the ignition key's down here. There we go, on. So what we got, we got a round LCD, no TFT. Idiot lights down the right hand side. We got a big digi speedo, big digi um, gear indicator. Semi-radial, taco, fuel gauge, temperature, uh, modes. We've got sport, road, rain and user. Um, we've got the, the power, the torque, the engine baking. They're all, you can change them all. I'm not going to mess because anybody who knows anything about the, the other bikes, it'll be there. We've got the trips underneath, average speed. What else we got? Consumption, 
range. It's got a bit of everything. It's not had a lot of use. It's had a few rides, so we're coming across. Little tiny dicky, dicky little, look at these, very short, but I can see through them. We got span adjustable front brake, start, stop, smart start. We've got a cruise control. Now that's something you don't get on the smaller bikes. Cruise control, that's very handy. It's on the right hand side, the same as the AT and the NT. Once you get used to it, it's fine. You just flick it with your thumb, it does work. Coming across, same dicky uh, Mickey Mouse ears. We've got a cable operated clutch, not span adjustable. Hazard warning, high and low, the pass is on there. Horn, <coughs> indicators, nice. Modes and selection, this is where you alter your trips and your power modes, dead simple. What do you think? Not bad, is it? So let's have a look, a bit closer up, give you the stats. Okay, we'll give it its full name. This is a 2024 plate, CMX 1100 Rebel. It is brand new from 2021. They haven't really altered it much bar colour. As I say, this one is available brand new, £8,999. It's a lot of bike for not a lot of money. What do you think? We're using the same 1084 liquid-cooled 8-valve engine, parallel twin, this has got a 32% heavier flywheel. It rides different, it feels different, it doesn't spin up quite as quickly as the NT and the AT. It's got a few little things, there's less power for a start off. It's 86 brake at 7,000 and it's got 72.3 foot pound at 4,750. It's a six speed manual with a clutch chain drive. There is the DCT available, it's just over the Grand Moor. So you ain't getting that for nine grand, you're getting that for around the 10 mark. So to be fair, nine grand bike, on the road, manual. If you've got a short leg, how good's that? 13.6 litres of fuel, a very low 700 mil seat height. 223 kilograms wet, that's not too bad. Let's have a look at the front end. The steering lock's underneath there, like an old-fashioned one. So we've got standard conventional 43mm telescopic forks, twin shower piggyback shocks on the rear. On the front end, we've got a single 330mm disc with a four-pot radial. Uh, it, it doesn't, it's not badged, I don't know who it is. On the front, we've got a 130 70 18 it's running dunlop d 428 f's must be some sort of cruiser pattern i'm not sure but single disc but it's not bad round the back we've got a single 256 mil disc with a twin piston caliper non-badged again fairly chunky rear tire as a 180 65 a fairly chunky rear tyre, a 180-65-16. Fairly small, isn't it? What do you think? So there's the cannon launcher. Shall we start it up and have a sound? There it is from the dash. And here's the cannon launcher in mat. What do you think? It's all there, isn't it? Okay, it's not a sexy Harley Davidson, but this won't break. This will still be going. The build quality ain't bad. I'm not sure about the matte downpipes and the matte exhaust, but it's a lovely looking bike. Nice finish. Shall we give it a ride? Yeah, come on, let's go and ride it. Okay. Well, if you've ever ridden a Rebel 500, it's a beautiful engine, but the one thing it ain't got is a lot of go. Now, this 1100 is the exact opposite. It'll shoot you up to 50 at the blink of an eye. Fourth gear doing 50 smack on. You can see some of the rainwater coming off the, the fields from where it was raining yesterday. Absolutely deluged it down. 
Well, hang on, something's happening here. We've got the old bill, have we? We'll just overtake them nice and steady. There we go, we're away again. Clutches changes, no problem at all. Once you're in second gear, you don't need a clutch. Anyway, let's just slow down back into a 50. All this rubbish on the road here. Jeez. Makes finding a clean line a bit a bit challenging, doesn't it? Anyway, we're away again. Round the bend. We consider the new tyres, they're quite confidence inspiring. The last time I had double ups on they was road smart, so but that was good. Anyway, these are D428, aren't they? So, how's the bridge looking? Yep, we're clear. I'm just going to let these cars go. See you in a minute. Okay, that's better. We've got the road to ourselves. a good air box sound when you give it a little bit. Anyway, I'll drop it in a third. 30 mile an hour. One thing you notice about these uh, Hondas is the cruise control doesn't come on below 30 mile an hour. Which I do think is such a shame these days with its 20 zones everywhere. But still, a cruise is better than no cruise. Moist again there. It's quite a talky engine for a, a parallel twin, a, a big 1100. It can, you can drop the revs down quite low in third and fourth gear and it still pulls nicely. There we are, we're doing we're third gear doing about 2500 revs. Bit of traffic about it. St. Dennis. Just check our time wheeling round. When the sun's on you, it's beautiful, isn't it? Once you get used to the position, the seating position, it's not bad. The throttle's just a little tiny bit abrupt. I'm just not sure. Might be worth trying a different mode. We'll put it in standard, there we go. Standard mode. Just see if that calms the throttle a little bit. Just a little bit abrupt. All clear. I know some people on the NT forum use rain mode in town because some of the bikes are worse than others. I don't know why, thank you. This one's not too bad to be fair, but in sport it wasn't fantastic so we're in third of 30 up to a 50 here we go we'll take a right to Trevisco oh one's pulling out the garage here we go we'll take a right holes in that front end's really nice here we go There we are, national speed, 60 mile an hour. Let's have a feel of it then. Steering's positive, just needs just a gentle push on the outside of the bar. Here we go, it just turns in nicely. We're gonna have to drop a cog here. 
flick it through the chicane and again a bit moist there give it a bit there straight to 60 drop it down again a lot of loose stuff there but it's okay we're doing fine let's just see what the slow riding is like as you can see there's sand and debris and all sorts everywhere when I say it rained yesterday it was biblical I thought Noah was going to bring his boat down the St Irish Road anyway here we are slow riding is easy there's not a lot of feel in the back brake but it's okay as a stability device so we're in second gear we'll just let it drop down the hill the throttle does feel better in standard I will say that if this is going to be your first big bike big step up from a, a, a 500 rebel might be best just chucking it in rain mode for the first few miles just till you get used to it and then gradually up it to standard 30 mile an hour that's cleared it so we get to the interesting bit of road shall we so it's a third gear pull away into a national no problem at all drop it in lovely we just slow down that's the depot right nothing behind nothing in front back brake 40 now I'll give that a real good hard stamp it's okay it's what you'd expect for a rear bike normally cruisers are a little bit firmer on the back a little bit stronger so here we go we'll come around the bend are we clear yeah it's straight on clear front brake okay so considering that's only a single stopper that front brake's pretty damn good actually radials right so we go down the hill we'll test them both out together front and back here we go 40 downhill absolutely fine good brakes when you use the front in conjunction with the rear it's got good stopping power Okay, it's a bit drier than when we came down the other day on the old shotgun. Tip it in, tip it over again. Felt my heel touch the floor then. Up to 60. Yeah, the steering's very good, but you do need to be positive with it. Needs a proper counter steer. Whether you're a pusher or a puller, you do need to do one or the other. So. Here we go, over the bridge, we're in third, let's pick it up. Okay, so, 60 miles an hour, cruise control on, holding a beautiful line. Once you've tipped it in and picked the line, you don't need to do any adjusting. It's very, very good. To be fair, the more I ride this bike, the more I quite like it. If it had proper forward pegs, I'd love it. It'd feel more like the Meteor around here, a lot more pokey. Yeah, it's a nice bike. I can appreciate the looks might not be for everyone. But not everyone's six foot five. Some of the the shorter riders they need something that can touch the floor on. It's always nice to touch the floor on a bike. Gives you a bit of confidence. So we'll tip it in. We're in a fifty still. Straight up to fifty. The, the engine's decidedly smoother than the eighty. I think it's because it's not developing as much power up the rev range it's, it's producing 80 brake but it's all down there low between two and five so here we are third gear roll on down the big hill national uh, 
there we are, straight up to 70. Can't fault it, can you? It's a naked bike, no screen. I don't think it needs a screen. I'm getting no buffeting whatsoever. Quite a comfortable ride. As I say, it's quite a reach to the bars, but it's not too bad. So we'll knock the crews off, move over a lane. There we go. Drop a cog. You can reach uh, 70 comfortable in fourth gear. Uh, fifth gear, sorry. You can reach 70 comfortable in fifth gear. Six is just an overdrive. We'll let the tractor go, shall we? Mr. McCormack tractor. Round we go. Looking good. All cleared on the island. Here we go, up the hill. I'll drop across the lane. There we go. I'll just ease off. Put the traction on 60. No point going any quicker. So what do you think? If you're looking for a brand new bike, 1100cc, with a very low seat height, cruiser style, Honda reliability, look no further, £8,999 on the road. Sign here. <laughs> anyway, what do you think? Have you enjoyed it? Have you enjoyed the video? Have you enjoyed the other videos? Why not click on the like, subscribe, Ring that little bell. Ask me a question. You know, I'm only too and I'm only too pleased to answer questions. I don't mind. I'll talk motorbikes with anybody. It's great fun. And I'd like to thank Mark at Dam Rules for lending me a bike again. We're hoping to get the electric clutch 650s in the next week or two. The Himalayan 350. We're hoping to have that in the next two or three weeks. So that'll be a nice bike to ride, won't it? Anyway, we're nearly here. We're nearly back at Damrolls. I've enjoyed riding this. Better than I thought, actually. For such a big lad, all crunched up. <laughs> it's not been bad. Anyway. This is the Lofty Biker. Saying. Ta-da for now. Ta-da.